Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Souter, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again on this rainy Tuesday night afternoon. Man, I hope you guys are doing great wherever you're at in the country. Hopefully, this virus has not gotten you guys, and uh, you know everybody's staying well. But tonight we are on the banks of the High River. Um, as you guys can see, we got the. Uh, let's see right here. That is the green marker buoy for the Canal River, where it comes flows out into the Ohio. This bridge behind you will be the Galpolis Bridge that goes across from West Virginia to Ohio. And I am fishing uh, right on the point of Point Pleasant. Um, a lot of people fish here. It's a good it's a good area to fish, whether you fish out there off a boat or on the bank. But today. Uh, got some crappy weather rains falling uh, river is flooded real hard and I get a lot of questions about you know when is a good time to bank fish um, and you know something that I tell a lot of people and they think that I'm crazy but it's when the river is flooded uh, you know you can use those things to your advantage and you know uh, we want to take advantage of every opportunity that we can so tonight I want to kind of show you guys you know uh, a bank interpretation of walking baits okay so I already got one out there um, I've got some heavy heavier weight on it it's got an eight uh, I believe it's got a okay it's got a five or six ounce on it um, this has got a three ounce on it so I may end up having to put a lighter weight on that one not sure yet but uh, what we're doing as you guys can see over my shoulder here we have a real heavy flooded uh, current scene that's coming down the Ohio and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast into that current seam as far as I can and then I'm going to allow myself to be able to walk that bait down that current seam as far as I can okay now we're using uh, pin squall size 20s this is uh, slime line 50 pound I can hold about 200 yards of line on this reel so if we do it right uh, we should be able to you know get down that current seam uh, somewhere between you know 100 150 yards um, if all works out well now uh, there is some current that is coming out the canal and then you know we have the heavier current that we're going to use to our advantage um, coming down the Ohio so now using a couple different rigs this one is just the uh, double hook uh, Kentucky rig and like I said I only got three ounces on it um, you know I'm gonna actually you know I'm gonna use it to walk the bait down that current seam uh, and then on the other one I actually have a three-way rig kind of almost exactly what I would use out there in the Mississippi River uh, two you know three-way crane double crane swivels um, with a dropper loop and then you know a longer leader with a de uh, demon dragon uh, Diachi d85 seven knots and good old cut gizzard Chad so let's get out there
All right, so as you can see, we got about half that spool off. So somewhere around 125 yards or so, and we are, you know, diagonally straight down that uh, down that current seam. So we'll lock her up, see what happens. Now I got two rods out. Uh, you can see the one right here in the corner, and then you can see the other, the other line going down right there, kind of off to the side. I put the the heavier weight on my longer rod, uh, you know, because I was able to cast it out more. I've actually got probably 160, give or take yards, out there with it. Um, it's pretty pretty well spooled out, or just about spooled out. So. Now we just gotta see what happens. Uh, you know, these these current seams, you know, where that Ohio River is kind of backing that that Canal River up, this area gives, you know, gives the fish a place to go and kind of get out of that mainline current, you know, out of this main Ohio River current. They can kind of come over here and stage up. Uh, shad, man, I tell you what, shad are, uh, <laughs> they're hard to come by. I mean, uh, some of the backwaters and stuff have really, you know, they've, they've started getting some shad in them, but, you know, it's that time of year where things, you know, really start getting hard whenever it comes to, comes to bait. I have, you now something that really intrigued me about this, this area, you know, earlier today, before the, the rain picked up, and it's, it's been raining for a few hours here, but uh, before the rain picked up, there was a lot of birds, you know, working this area. And that's another good indication, you know, of what's going on here as well. You know, I've seen some fish roll, uh, not really sure what they were, white bass, maybe some channel cats, not really sure, but seen a lot of, you know, a lot of activity. And, you know, that kind of stuff is things you need to keep your eye out for whether you're a boat or bank fisherman. Uh, Johnny, the the main river um, current, approximately, I'm gonna guess it's somewhere around the three. Uh, that would be my guess. Now, I don't know for sure, but uh, you know, that's, that's my guess. Uh, Jason, um, I'm, you know, I actually, as you guys know, you know, I sold, uh, uh, I sold the, the red pro cat, the slunger cat, and, you know, we're currently waiting on uh, the new boat to be, uh, to be finished. But to answer your question, no, I, I am actually doing this, you know, by choice, uh, you know, for you guys. You know, I get a lot of people ask me, you know, and make comments uh, about, you know, boat fishing and, and you know how you know there's there's nobody that re they really know to do a lot of bank fishing or where or how to go about it so you know as it gets warmer you know tuesday nights like this uh oh you know are, are good times for me to be able to come out and you know show you guys areas or you know uh techniques on <clears throat> you know how to approach you know, catching these fish uh, here in about a month you know it's going to be game on whether you're a boat or a bank fisherman and, and I want you guys to have all your stuff together you know and ready to go whenever whenever that time does arise uh, you know flathead season is is upon us and and uh, you know it's the best time of the year to be out on the water here in just uh, you know just a short month March is March is gone and, and April will be gone before we know it so There is a lot of trash in the water. Uh, which way do I need to turn the camera? Let's see here. There we go. Is that better? That way you guys can kind of see both rods. Yeah, I never even thought about that. You guys can get a good look. Let me move out of the way here. You guys can look 
coming up the high river man it's a nasty storm coming so hopefully we can get something get something going before before that gets here <laughs> i wish you guys could see it i got an umbrella i got an umbrella over top of the camera and the uh, uh the mic so that it doesn't get wet and thankfully i got my i have my catfish clothing rain gear in the uh, truck so so i'm staying pretty warm it is kind of cold out here uh dalton yes i do i mean uh dalton ask if i catch and cook um you know i love to eat fish and i do catch a few i do eat a few <laughs> Ironically enough, I just watched a movie about the high river called Dark Waters. If you've never watched, it's a, doc, a documentary about the DuPont plant in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and how they were dumping uh, chemicals into the water, you know, and gave a lot of people cancer and killed a lot of animals. And, and I don't want to ruin it for anybody that's going to watch it, but if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's called Dark Waters. Um, phenomenal phenomenal movie but you know i eat fish out of this river a lot of people tell me i shouldn't and maybe i shouldn't but Hey, Brian, uh, Brian made a comment about he was down to Bird Dam and he was using bluegills. You know, uh, there is a great time and a place for bluegills. It's just a shade little early uh, yet for bluegills, but it's coming up. You know, bluegill will be a phenomenal, phenomenal bait. You know, in the uh, in the spring, the spring time of the year, I will use a lot of bluegill. Um, normally, uh, normally like May, June, uh, July, you know, right around the spawn time is a really good time. You know, for uh, for bluegill, and a lot of times they're not going to eat it because they want it, uh, especially whenever you go towards the towards the spawn time of the year they're kind of eating it because you know they're they're attacking it because that's going to you know bluegills are going to try to eat their eggs and things like that so so that's a good you know reaction bait you know per se every once in a while i get a little action on on that long black rod right there Uh, just cause cat uh, catfishing, as far as I know, they are not. Uh, uh, you know, skipjack usually start running there about May, end of April. Um, if we have a year like we do now, where it's getting warmer a lot quicker, um, sometimes mid April will do good as well. But but normally, you know, that first part of May is really good down there. If you guys are new to the channel, I want to thank you guys for joining in tonight. I try to do a, a Tackle Talk Tuesday every Tuesday night and something I, I kind of try to change it up a little bit so that I'm just not sitting in a garage or behind a desk talking. And uh, something I've been trying to do is find different uh, places to fish from the bank um, to kind of join in on that as well. And plus, you know, it's nice to get out of a afternoon after work, see if we can't catch some fish. Last week was able to uh, fish a little local lake down by me and catch something that a lot of people haven't seen. It's bowfin. Um, so if you, I called that one mud hole fishing, I believe. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that one last week, make sure you guys go back and check that one out as well. Uh, 
I seen somebody pop up there talk about uh, creek chubs. Um, creek chubs are a, an excellent bait, especially you know in the springtime of the year. I'm gonna put my hood up a little bit. My head's starting to get wet. But uh, in the springtime of the year, you know, when especially like we're starting to get these floods right now, that's uh, kind of washing those creeks out. You know, uh, a lot of places have either already had a shad kill or a shad kill is, you know, relevant right now. So, you know, uh, whenever those creeks get washed out, all that old nasty dead bait, you know, gets washed out as well. And I always use, you know, kind of try to keep those relevant to uh, what I'm doing, um, you know, as far as time of year and things of that nature. But now, uh, for anybody that really, really likes to flathead fish, you know, big creek chubs, you know, six, seven, eight inch creek chubs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dustin, I probably am. I've been watching that storm come up that river, uh, waiting on seven o'clock to get here, and it just keeps inching its way up to me. But, uh, you know, we was talking about flatheads, you know, big uh, creek chubs, big suckers, uh, you know, things like that are, are, you know, good, good flathead baits. So, and that's all year round, you know, especially, uh, you know, I, I really like to use suckers after the spawn um, kind of like whenever I would start using moon eye or things like that, but sucker is a good bait, and you know I like the uh, the bigger ones. Um, somebody asked about the the line. So, when it comes to bait clickers. And whether I set, you know, set my bait clickers or not here, uh, you know, it worked out pretty good. I don't have no bank rod holders, so I'm just kind of uh, going old school with it. But there's these huge boulders that I'm able to uh, set the butt of the rod back in and, you know, angle the rod on. <clears throat> and it works out great because I can set my belt or set my uh, reel, engage my reel. And... And, uh, you know, just let the fish do what it would normally do. Uh, somebody asked about live bait. I'm going to go get a piece of bait to show you guys. All right, so let's talk about you know hooking live bait because it won't be long and it's going to definitely be live bait season. So this is a what I would consider a good uh, live bait. It's about eight inches or so, you know, nice uh, gizzard shad. So two ways that I like to hook them: one, and let's see, I got my rod laying on my bag. I'll take and run the hook from the bottom of the lip right up through the through one of the nostrils kind of at an angle or I will hook it kind of back here okay now if I hook it if I'm running you know if I want a lot of motion a lot of uh, uh, movement out of my fish I will hook it back here uh, your fish is gonna have to fight more you know because if you hook it back here and you throw him out, that current is kind of wanting to push him down. So he's going to have to swim more to get turned around and get his nose into the current uh, the way that he likes to. And he'll have, you know, kind of swimming sideways, naturally looking like he's hurt and injured and making a lot of commotion. That's what I like. You know, if I have a preference, it's back here. Um, the bad downside of that is, you know, they can move so much that they get double hooked. Uh, 
there are some little tricks to that that I'm trying, and and bef and once I get them, kind of I want I want to say tuned in, uh, to way to where I can confidently say that it works, I will you know let those cats out of the bag as well. But if you hook them through the nose, they'll last longer. Um, so if you're wanting a bait to to uh, last longer, then you can hook it through the nose. Now, the downside to that is that it's not going to fight as much. It's going to, you throw it out there, it sinks down, the sinker pulls it to the bottom, and it, it can just kind of float in the current. Uh, you know, breathe, do all it needs to do, kind of lay down on the bottom and, and almost hide uh, away, you know, get away from the predator fish. So, just like just like our employees want us to work as much as the, as they can completely get out of us i want to i want to hook this bait and use this bait in the same manner and my favorite place is back here so hopefully that helps you guys and if there's any more questions just make sure you you hit me up <clears throat> Not real prime conditions to be out here fishing tonight. But we'll take it. We'll take it. Got a barge coming up river. Well, this bank is slicker than snot now, I tell you. Uh, you know, I'll sit here. You know, uh, when it comes to bank fishing, there's a lot, you know, uh, there's a little bit of difference. You know, if I was in a boat, I I would set up out, out there, you know, kind of where that ledge is. Uh, and for, you know, anybody that doesn't know, that green marker buoy out there or any buoy on the river, okay, if you see a, if you see a red or green channel marking buoy, that is just that, okay? So, you know, keep that in mind when you're looking at looking at places to fish. So my my want was to hit that current seam, work my baits back, and I figure that that, that green can is probably about 75 to 90 yards away from me, or away from the bank. So I feel like if I can get on the other side of that, that I'm reaching that, you know, that good ledge uh, to get down on where those fish might be traveling okay so so the question was you know how long would I sit here that the long rod is getting a getting a little bit of a taste you know, if, if I'm bank fishing here, I'll probably sit here, uh, you know, an hour, um, maybe even an hour and a half before I move my baits. And then, you know, once I move my baits, you know, I may move it down river a little bit, put a lighter weight on, maybe, maybe bring it closer to the bank. Uh, Now I got a head, I got a gizzard chat head on that one. <clears throat> Something's out there sucking around on it. Yeah, not the not the best night to be out here. Cold, wet, rainy. But hey, we out here, we enjoying it. We above dirt. That's really all that matters. I 
I don't know how much you guys been keeping up with this the coronavirus stuff, but I tell you what, it has sure, sure spread and going a little bit of crazy. No, we can't catch them from the couch. <laughs> well, that's a pretty sight. That big old barge coming through that, coming underneath that uh, Galpliss bridge. Another movie, if you guys, for you guys that are uh, stuck at home, you know, my family and I, we've been watching a lot of movies, but uh, another good movie about this area, you know, is uh, is the, the Mothman Prophecy movie. Uh, if you don't know the history about Point Pleasant and the two rivers and all the Indians and the, and and just the, the Mothman and everything else that goes with it, you should definitely check that movie out. Now somebody, uh, somebody made a good comment, not sure who it was, I want to thank you, whoever it was, uh, talked about planter boards. And this would be an excellent place uh, for that. Um, especially once it warms up, you know. It's just a few degrees from being warm enough to where we could go bumping for blue cats. Water temperature's up in the 50s. Won't be long and them big old blue cats be hammering. Um, let's see, Dark Waters was, I was able to rent it off of, uh, off our cable. So, so I would, I would venture to say that the Dark Waters is on um, Netflix as well. That's right, Mike. Bumping, baby. Won't be long. Be able to start bumping down that river. For the guys that are watching in the West Virginia area, you know, uh, these waters, especially around here, have always been known for flatheads. And... You know, a lot of, most of the people really fish for flatheads around, you know, like the Ohio Canal area where the West Virginia uh, borders the Ohio River. But several years ago when they started stocking them, stocking blue cats, and now uh, these blue cats are really, are really taking off and there's lots of good numbers. There's good opportunities, especially this spring when things get flooded and, and the water warms up good enough. For you guys that don't know how to bump that want to learn, that'd be the good time. Now, last week I went back through and, and I asked a question about, you know, if you guys had any areas or uh, places that you guys would like to see me go bank fish. Uh, Went and checked a couple out, but unfortunately there was some places that I didn't have service. So we won't be able to do those uh, because I do these live feeds through my phone. But if you guys know of some place, you know, here relatively, uh, you know, not too far away that I could make it to and you want me to go try it, uh, do a little bank fishing one afternoon, uh, you know, make sure and leave it in the comments. Now this is a, you know, like I said before, this is a public fishing area, as far as I know. Uh, you know, this is like the main park in downtown Point Pleasant. A lot of fish caught, you know, right out here where these two rivers come together.
Uh, Chunky Cats, thanks, buddy. I, I appreciate that. You know, there's a lot of bank fishermen. You know, that's kind of, you know, that's how I got started was uh, bank fishing and, and uh, you know, things of that nature whenever I was a kid on the side of the river. But, and it can be just as much fun, you know. Uh, right now, I'm kind of wishing I had a pop-up or something. Uh, swivels, I use, uh, so I use a couple different kinds <clears throat> of swivels. Crane swivels, uh, just regular barrel swivels I use from tackling cats. Um, you know, I, I say this a lot, and you guys hear me say this a lot. The one thing to keep in mind when it comes to swivels is to check for a pound test rating. Uh, that pound test rating is not important because you know how much it's going to break, but it's important to know that they're doing some sort of quality control on their swivels, okay? So, uh, tackling cats, um, they're like 225 pound test. They're a little big, but they're made in America. Uh, really good stuff. Um, Tackle Bandit carries those as well as the double crane swivels that I use. Uh, Brian, that's a good question. Brian, <laughs> uh, Brian asks, you know, my guess on how big of a fish actually live in the Ohio River. Uh, you know, I I wouldn't think that it would be unrealistic to think that there is, you know, a hundred, you know, uh, a blue cat. Now, let's, we'll, uh, I'll separate them a little bit. Blue cat. Um, that there's probably a 120 to 130 pound blue cat, you know, in the High River, especially on the southern part of the High River. Uh, flathead, you know, I would say 70, 80, um, realistically. Uh, channel cat, you know, uh, I don't see a whole bunch of big, big channel cats, but I'm going to guess, I'd say, you know, 30 uh, pound plus channel cat. You know, uh, the big thing is, you know, I mean, if you hooked a 70 or 80 pound flathead, heck, you may not even know it. You may just think you hooked a log. Uh, you know, I had a, I had somebody ask me that same question last week. They asked me what my personal best was uh, from the bank. Um, and man, I've thought about that, and I, I, I honestly, I honestly don't know. Uh, I'm gonna guess, you know, somewhere in that, you know, 20, 30 pound range. Uh, as far as catfish goes, but but I don't know, uh, to be honest. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to break that, you know. I got some ducks out there, or a duck. You see him out there? He coming to say hi. A hundred and five. That's a nice fish. No matter where he's at. I believe I've seen that one on Facebook. It's starting to look a little gloomy back here. We're going to wait it out as long as we can, see if we can't catch some, uh, catch something. Uh, Jason, you know, when it comes to changing baits, you know, uh, from the bank, if, if I let it sit there an hour, you know, if I, if I reel it in and I got plenty of bait, um, you know, I'm going to put fresh bait on there. Now, uh, a lot of times, a lot of people don't have fresh bait, but if you're fishing a river section and that, and that water is, you know, constantly flowing and, uh, washing the, you know, the scent and the blood and oils off that bait. You know, I want to try to get new out there as much as I can. Yeah, the, uh, <coughs> uh, 
for those of that you know have watched the channel you know for a while the james river is is one of my absolutely favorite places to fish i i usually try to go out there once maybe twice a winter three times a winter depending on the winter uh, but it is you know it's absolutely phenomenal Uh, the biggest blue that I've ever caught in Ohio has been, you know, right around 60 pounds. Um, that was actually lower, the lower Ohio River. Um, West Virginia has been in the high, uh, high 50s. Um, Mississippi, you know, has been in the 70s. Uh, Tennessee has been in the 70s. If I had one river to fish the rest of my life, it would probably be it'd probably be the Tennessee River, but but I'm telling you what that Mississippi River is sure nice. Daryl, did you catch it from the bank? If you did, I mean. That's a nice fish, no matter whether you caught it from the bank or not, but. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm hoping they, uh, I'm hoping it gets done before too long too. We gotta, I need to get back to work and uh, start on season two uh, filming. Uh, for you guys that are don't know or haven't um, haven't kept up with it, Catfish Crazy is literally just over a month away. Um, I've got a sneak peek at a couple of the shows. Um, we done one out on the James River. Uh, and done one on Lake Erie at Sandusky Bay and those two shows I have been able to you know look at and watch and man I cannot wait for you guys to see it uh, they make me they make it look a lot lot better than uh, what I really am I think but uh, but yeah May 4th um, if you're a Star Wars Star Trek kind of person it's the that you know May the 4th be with you. But don't forget that that's Pursuit Channel. Um, yeah. So, I tell you what, it is kind of starting to rain pretty good. We've been out here for about 40 minutes. Unfortunately, no fish yet. But, uh, but hey, a lot of the times, you know, these shows... You know, I, I do these shows because I want to make sure to give you guys as much information as I can. So, so as always, if you guys have any questions that you guys want me to break down in future uh, Tackle Talk Tuesdays, make sure you leave it in the comments. That's where I get my information from. I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm going to try to sneak out of here before I get completely soaking wet. Don't want to get sick or get a cold. People might think I got the corona. But... Uh, Hey, as always, if you guys know somebody that needs to be prayed for, you want me to pray for you, or maybe you just you want to know how to bring God into your life, please let me know. Uh, I would love to uh, love to talk to you more about Jesus anytime I possibly can. He's our Lord and Savior, and I can't thank Him enough for what He has done and what He is doing for us in this time right now. So keep praying for this country. Keep praying for everybody you know if you guys need anything let me know until next week i want to thank you guys for watching hit that thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and we will catch you guys next week for more more tackle talk thanks for watching